<coughs> okay, the goal is for students to be able to use trigonometry to find the area of a triangle. So if we go back to what you already know about the area of a triangle, what's the formula? Pause the video and write your answer down. You might have written half times base times the perpendicular height or base times perpendicular height over 2 and if we use symbols half times BH question but what if we don't have the perpendicular height that relies us on having <coughs> the perpendicular height now you can see in this diagram here that formula relies us on having this red broken line but what if we don't know that what if we don't have that there we need another way after all we could be asked uh, for the area of a triangle and we might be given maybe one of these sides like C or A or B maybe one of the angles like capital A capital B or capital C so there is a way of doing that but we first need to work out how the formula comes about <clears throat> so if we've got half of the base times perpendicular height as our starting point we can work out another formula by the way just re remember that the perpendicular height is not the same as the slant heights in a triangle so the perpendicular height as you can see h has a right angle between it and the base so it's 90 degrees uh, there's a 90 degree angle formed with the connection of the perpendicular height in the base whereas A and C in that diagram there are the slant heights so the slant heights and perpendicular heights are different so let's work out this formula we've got I've written in blue there area of a triangle is half base times perpendicular height so that equals a half times the base let's let the base be this B here and the base all depends on which perspective you look at you can choose any of the sides to be the base I'm going to choose the bottom side B so it's still half times B now this we've got to use a little bit of trigonometry if we look just at the left hand triangle this one here the one shaded in we can use a bit of trig and we look at angle A which is that angle there if I go sine of A sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse that equals H over C so we can find an expression to replace this H here H will equal C times sine A so we're going to put that in there so times instead of H we're going to replace it with C times sine A so we're replacing that directly in there so getting my colors corresponding so we've got instead of H we've got C sine A so half B C sine A so the area of a triangle is half BC sine A. Let's look at it more formally now. The area of a triangle is equal to half the product, so half the product of two sides, that means timesing, two sides and the sine of the included angle now if we have a look at that there um, the area now um, maybe I'm guilty of being a bit ambiguous there but if you put area with a little triangle there or if you write the word area do one of those two things okay because if you just leave that as A it can get confused with angle A alright so be careful so <clears throat> it's 
it's probably good to write area or even capital A for a little triangle which suggests area of triangles. You see the little triangle subscript there? So it's half of the product of two of the given sides and the angle included. In this example here, we've, they've used side A and side B and the included angle you can see is C. It's between those two sides there. Okay. And in this other example, you might think, wait, I need to use the different formula, but it's really the same formula with different sides and angles. But if you follow, if you follow this, you can't go wrong. Okay, so basically, I used side B and side. Whoops, that's a bit wonky. And side C, wonky, wonky, and the included angle there okay so b c and sine a so as long as you do that i guess there'd be one other one that i haven't written down there for area equals half well, i've used a b here and b c up there so what about a c so that would be a and c so you could do that a c sine of angle b that would do the same as well Okay, so that gives you the area if you know two of the sides and an included angle. We don't need to know the perpendicular height. It's certainly not limited to right angle triangles. It's any, any triangle is fine to use. Quick example, find the value of x, which is that side there, correct to two decimal places given that the area is 70. So the area is actually given so if we let's let's uh, name these here so we've got i'm just going to call that uh, instead of x well let's call it x y and z hey let's be different i just thought of that now x y and z the letters don't matter so we've basically got to find x and we know that the area is based on two sides and included angle one of the sides we've got we've got side x and z so half of x times z times sine of the included angle, which is 93. I guess I could have put um, what angle y would probably be more correct to put in at this stage. Okay, that's so it's y because remember when we're doing this, that's capital X there and that's capital Z there. Okay, from previous, so uh, that would be uppercase Y. Now we can sub the values in, so it's half. We've got half of X times 10 times sine Y. Sine Y, well Y is 93, subbing the values in, in other words. And area is given, as we said, 70. So, and we're working in centimeters or centimeters squared. Okay, now we've just got to rearrange, and we're in business here. So to solve, we need to isolate for x. So we've got all these multipliers here, and we've got to divide by all of these quantities here, and we've got to do the same to both sides. So what we do to the left, we do to the right, and that means we've got 70 divided by I would suggest the use of brackets in the calculator here a half to keep it all together to half times 10 times sine 93 degrees and that will give us X so calculate that now we've been asked two decimal places so that would be 14 Point zero two centimeters to two decimal places.